Good day and welcome back. Today we are going to look at the types of tissue. Specifically in this tutorial, our focus will be on the epithelial tissue. Under the epithelial tissue, we are going to discuss the function and also tell you what the epithelial tissue is. Next, we are going to look at the general characteristics of the epithelial tissue and lastly we will discuss the classification and naming of the epithelial tissue so stick to and watch this video to the end let's get started remember a tissue refers to cells working together in functional related groups that's just a basic definition when talking about the types of tissue there are basically four types of tissue in the human body so the first of this is the epithelial tissue next we have the connective tissue also we have the muscular tissue and lastly we have the nervous tissue our focus here is going to be on the first of this tissue which is the epithelial tissue so let's get started all right let's get on the way epithelial tissue what is it in a simplified definition that i have here Epithelial tissue is a tissue that is made of sheet of cells that are closely packed with little or no extracellular matrix. But I want you to pay attention to this word here, the extracellular matrix. We are going to see this a lot when we are discussing the connective tissue, so pay attention to that. However, from the image below here, it helps us better understand this definition. Firstly, we see that the cells here, they are closely packed. These bo both of these images are examples of epithelial tissues in a way. So we see the cells here are closely packed. And between the cells, we don't see any extracellular content. Rather, we found the cells being attached to each other. That is a basic characteristic of epithelial tissue. Next, let's look at the functions of epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue actually provide protection for the body. They also function in absorption. Next, they have secretory function, ionic transport, the functional infiltration at the level of the kidney and lastly they form the slippery surface of some hollow internal organs before we go on i would love to make this clarity here this word is often i found out that a students misuse this word the phrase is epithelium this is a singular form of the word and next we have epithelia, which is the plural form. Lastly, we have the epithelia, which is the adjective form of the word. So when we are using this, if you see me using epithelial tissue, I will use this or this. And also when I use the epithelium, I will not have to use tissue so hope you take note of that as we go through this tutorial so what distinguishes an epithelial tissue from other types of tissue we are going to look at those general properties right firstly we have the cellular composition unlike other types of tissue the epithelial tissue is predominantly made of cells, meaning there are numerous cells. Next, these cells, they are closely packed to each other, as you can see from the image here. 
And lastly, epithelial tissue have little or no extracellular matrix. So from the preview of the cellular composition, these are basic characteristics that distinguish epithelial tissue from other types of tissue. Next, let's go on. Epithelial tissue, they are generally supported by connective tissue. So when you look at this sheet of epithelial tissue at the bottom here, we have a basement membrane, right? Below the basement membrane, we have our connective tissue. There is a reason for that, as we found out in subsequent tutorial. Next, number three, epithelial tissue, they are avascular. They do not have blood vessels. Then a question comes up, how do they get nourished? The nutrients that reach epithelial tissue diffuse from the underlying connective tissue to reach the cells. So, though they don't have blood vessels, they still do have their or receive nutrients by the process of diffusion. Next, epithelial tissue, they are innovative by nerves, meaning they don't have blood vessels, but they have nerves that innovate those epithelial tissue. Number five, epithelial tissue, they have a high regeneration capacity, meaning whenever we have destruction of this tissue, epithelial tissue are able to regenerate themselves very quickly. That's where you have our skin, right? We have a shed in our skin. These cells that are shed out quickly become replaced. And that's a unique property of the epithelial tissue. Let's move on to number six. So, epithelial tissue properties continue. Here we have specialized contact. When you take a look at the cells that form the epithelial tissue, you notice that these cells, they have common boundary with each other, meaning there is specific interaction that goes on between these cells to allow them fix together. So without those basic properties, the cells will start to fall apart as, as a condition that occurs in some diseases. So from here, we can tell that between these cells, there are protein complexes known as junctional complex, as we will discuss in subsequent tutorial, that help pull epithelial cells together. And lastly, epithelial cells have both basal surfaces and apical surface. The basal surface is primarily formed by the basal lamina that is contributed towards by the connective tissue and also the epithelial tissue. At the apical surface, there are modifications that are formed here. As we will see in subsequent tutorial, you usually have cilia, stereocilia, or other forms of apical modification that aid in their function. Let's move on. With that now, we will move on to the classification and naming of epithelial tissue. Generally, epithelial tissue can be classified into two broad categories. The first of this is the membranous epithelium. The membranous epithelium form the covering of most organs, hollow or visceral organs, and they also form the lining of some body organs. The second type of epithelium is the glandular epithelium. This epithelium form most of the glands in the human body. For this tutorial, however, we are going to look at the membranous epithelium. 
and we'll discuss the glandular epithelium in subsequent tutorial. Membranous epithelium can be classified based on two properties. The first is the shape of the cells that form the tissue and the number of layers the tissue has. So, for the shape of the cells, we have squamous cells that usually appear flat. Next, we have the cuboidal cells that have cube shape and we have columnar cells that appear in the form of column. The next category for classification is the number of layers. For membranous epithelium that have single layer, we refer to it as a simple epithelium. Whereas the one that has more than one layer, we refer to it as the stratified epithelium. With that now, we will look at the naming of the various epithelial tissue. Taking into consideration the taking into consideration the number of layers and the shape of the cell. When it comes to naming epithelial tissue, there is one thing we need to note here. There is a first name and a last name. The first name comes about based on the number of layers, whereas the last name comes about based on the shape of the cell. What do we mean? Remember, we say when there is one layer, we refer to that particular tissue as a simple tissue. When there is more than one layer, as you can see here, we refer to the tissue as a stratified tissue. On the other end, remember the shape of the cells. Flat cells have, or we call them the squamous, the next one, the cube shape, we border, and the third, the column shape, we call them columnar. So, in simple terms, what we are going to do here for the naming of this tissue, we are going to combine the layer and the shape of the cell. Let's get started. So, firstly, if you have a single layer of tissue, meaning the cells that form the tissue form only a single layer, we we'll call that simple. However, if the cells that form that particular tissue, if they are squamous in shape, we call that particular tissue or a simple squamous tissue. So you get the idea now, right? The next one, what if the cell is a single layer, but the shape of the cells are cuboidal? How do we call it? We call it a simple cuboidal tissue. And it goes on, right? If it is columnar in shape in a single layer, we say simple columnar. Then let's move on to the next one, stratify. If the tissue is made of more than one layer and the cell type that make up that particular tissue as squamous, we refer to that tissue as a stratified squamous. Also, if it is more than one layer and the cells are cuboidal, we call it stratified cuboidal. Next, columnar is what? Well, stratified columnar. But also, there is one thing I want you to note here, especially when it comes to the stratified. Why if we had more than one layer of tissue? But the various, or, sorry, but you have different types of cells forming each of those layers. Like if, for example, you had three layers of cells forming that particular tissue. One layer there is made of squamous cells, 
The other layer is made of cuboidal cells and the last layer is made of columnar cells. How will you name that particular tissue? This is the rule that we follow, right? The cell that is at the top receives the name or, or receive the name for that particular tissue. So if you have squamous cell at the top of that particular tissue, though you have cuboidal at the bottom, you have columnar at the bottom, but that tissue will be named a squamous tissue. I just start to point that up as we go on. Next, the name of these cells, of these tissues, sorry, can be modified based on the presence of different components. For example, we could have goblet cells present in this tissue, we could have ciliar cells, we will also have the cells being keratinized. You are going to see this as we go on, especially discussing stratified tissue. Next, there are cells that would not, or tissue, sorry, that will not conform to this pattern of naming epithelial tissue. Let me just point that out. Those are special epithelial tissue. They don't follow this general naming pattern, meaning one layers, squamous, two, stratified, and so forth. Rather, they have their own name. And one of the third tissue is the pseudo stratified epithelium. The other is the transitional epithelium, as we will see why they are the way they are. Let's move on. Simple squamous. There was one thing that I forgot to point out in our previous slide. Those types of tissue that we listed, those are the basic types of tissue we have in the human body. So you remember we have simple squamous, right? We also have simple cuboidal, we have simple columnar stratified squamous and so forth. You can carry, you can rewind the video and see what I'm talking about. But those are the basic types of tissue. And we are going to look at each of those types of tissue beginning with the simple squamous epithelium. In discussing each of these types of tissue, we will basically ask three questions and try to answer them as clearly as possible. The first is, what is it? Simple squamous epithelium, what is it? As we stated, is a single layer of flat cells that have a disc shaped nuclear. That's just a simple definition of what simple squamous epithelium is. Next, where is it formed? Simple squamous epithelium may line the cardiovascular system, meaning it might line cavity in the heart, in blood vessels, etc. And also the myeline lymphatic system, right? When that happens, we refer to them as endothelium, meaning when we have them lining the heart, blood vessel, lymphatic vessel, we call them the endothelium. Next, they may form the outer layer of the serous membrane of different visceral organs that are formed in the abdomen and also at the level of the thoracic region. Sorry if I'm blowing your head up. But those organs that are usually located in our abdomen, they have layer of epithelium that are called the mesothelium. Aside from that, we also have the Epithelium being located at the level of the lungs, where you have oxygen exchange taking place in the lungs. And lastly, at the level of the kidney, where we have filtration of the blood going on. Those are some basic locations of the epithelial tissue. You could try and find out where are other areas we can find epithelial tissue aside from where 
or aside from the one that I listed here, a simple squamous epithelium. Next, what it does. The simple squamous epithelium allows the passage of material by passive diffusion and filtration. As we stated, they are located in the kidney and also at the level of the alveola in the lung. So definitely, it justifies that they allow passive diffusion of gases and also they allow the diffusion of other substances at the level of the kidney filtration. Next, we have the property of being able to secrete lubricating substances, especially at the level of the serosa membrane. So those are some basic functions as it relates to what they do. Let's move on to the next step of simple epithelial tissue. We next look at the simple cuboidal. What is it? It is a single layer of cube-like cells that have large but spherical nuclei. Where is it located? This epithelium usually cover the ovary. They also land the anterior surface of capsule of the lens of the eye and you find them in the kidney tubules and also smaller dots of many glands in our body. What they do, their basic function is secretion and absorption. Let's move on. The last group of simple epithelial tissue is the simple columnar epithelium. What is it? It is a single layer of column-shaped cells that have over nuclei. Remember, I told you that some of these cells can be modified by other structures that are listed. So, the simple columnar epithelium is one of such type of epithelium. They have cilia at their apical surface, and also they have goblet cells that are located among the cells within the tissue. The cilia usually at the apical surface will allow them to facilitate movement of substances as we see in at the level of the at the level of the female reproductive system. Next, where are they located? They are usually for the non ciliated ones meaning the ones that don't have cilia at their apical surface. We usually find them lining the digestive tract, the gallbladder, and also the dots of many glands in the body. For the ciliated ones, we find them lining the small bronchi. Also, we find them at the low of the uterine tube, right? So you see that they will facilitate the movement of the ovum at the level of the female reproductive system. They also learn the uterus. So those are some basic location of the simple columnar epithelium. What do they do? Let's find out. The simple columnar epithelium generally function in the absorption, the secretion of mucus, enzyme, and other substances. However, the ciliated ones, they function as I stated to propel mucus or reproductive cells by their ciliary action. Next, we will look at the epithelia or the stratifier epithelia. They are different type. Remember the simple stratifier or the stratifier squamosare, the stratifier cuboidal, and the stratifier columnar. However, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and like our tutorial. Also, you can share with someone who this might be very much indeed relevant to them.
Thank you, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.